Hello, I'm Holly Proctor. I'm the publisher of Inside Singletree Magazine. Today we're here for a new episode of the story behind the story. Andy Odie, a broker with Liv Sotheby's International Realty, is our exclusive video sponsor. Mm -hmm. And today we have the honor to be with Libby Swenson with Love Justice International and her husband Bob Swenson, who launched Freedom 58 Project. Many of you may recall, back in April, we featured Libby's story about how mm -hmm. she got involved mm -hmm. with Love Justice International. And as Bob kind of came up to speed with what she was doing, <laughs> often in disbelief, he finally figured out that this is real and it's a real issue, and he wanted to get involved. So I am really honored to have mm -hmm. them here. This actually will be a sneak preview of a very unique art collection that will be coming to Colorado. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Andy is gonna give us a tour and we're just gonna get a feel for what we have here. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Holly. So good to see you again. Good and to see you too. Bob, nice <laughs> to meet you and uh, love to hear the backstory with you and how you got involved with this. Can you share that a little bit with us? Well, in a number of years, I've always wanted to have a high impact in my life since I was a kid and uh, played in the NFL for 10 years and did some other stuff and real estate and stuff. But my wife recently, uh, well, recently, 15 years ago. <laughs> There were 40 million slaves in the world, and there were 2 million women and children that were annually trafficked in East Asia every year, and uh, cyber sex and all that stuff, and I didn't believe it. I said, that's impossible. And so I started for a couple years just thinking it through, like, what am I going to do with that many slaves and stuff? And literally, we were walking through Beaver Creek one day at an art show. And I had this idea that what if you had artists paint a portrait and give beauty and dignity to these women that have been trafficked and rescued and intercepted and all this kind of stuff. And I turned and this woman was painting a picture of somebody in Rwanda. And she said, what's your idea? And her name was Judy Dickinson, and she's a phenomenal portrait artist. And she goes, I'll do the first painting. I love yes. that. Serendipitous. It was amazing. Okay. And yeah. She, yeah. she, she goes, I get what you're doing. So I took that painting and I put it out, uh, you know, across the United States. And I had about 200 artists oh, that said, I lovely. know what you're doing. You're not yeah. selling the painting, but you want to bring awareness and mobilization. Yeah to and give dignity to these people that have yeah. been so traumatized and so horrific, this injustice of slavery. And uh, you know, today uh, people look at a slave and like a styrofoam cup, mm -hmm. like, okay, we'll just use this one and throw it away like a styrofoam cup. Yeah. You know, in the 1800s, slavery was, uh, a slave was really valuable. Now they think of them like 40 bucks. Yeah. I'll just get a new one. Yeah. So we developed this, art exhibit. For the last six years we've been building it and we're coming to the Vail Valley in winter of 2022. It's going to be at the uh, Colorado Mountain College and we'll probably have uh, 60 uh, phenomenal paintings. Uh, you know, Out of people. 230. Yeah, yeah we have 230 yeah. but we'll probably just have 40 to 60 at that, that venue mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be inviting all the residents of Singletree and really inviting all of Vail. Yeah, that's to come great. To see and see where you might be engaged and participate. Yeah. And I, it's really weird because I think you just do one little thing and then somehow yeah. this the... The rest of the pieces fall into just place. Just yes, Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And good for you. Bravo <laughs> for you. I love that, the rest of that story. <laughs> this is part two. I love yes, it. Definitely. So, Bob, I love that. That is, that's great. I love your passion about it, mm. and, as well as yours, Libby. And, and, and looking at the display that you have throughout here at this event, so many different um, mo um, well, it's different, I don't want to say motifs, but different, um, how would I put it? Styles. Styles mm -hmm. of the paintings and mm -hmm. obviously through the artists and, and some come through in an abstract form mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. some come through as a real portrait and, mm -hmm. and see the emotions. So with that being mm -hmm. said, I'm going to be the Vanna White and do this <laughs> as we are going to go walk around and, and really look at some of the examples as well. Give us some of your favorite, share some of those mm -hmm. favorite stories. Mm -hmm 
<laughs> as you, if you would, um, with some yeah. of the paint. So Absolutely. here we go. We're going to go walk around and go <laughs> see a few examples. Great. Okay, now here is an example mm -hmm. of a true portrait. And you can see these smiles over here, but share the story about this picture here. Yes, so this is a painting of Mina, which is a pseudonym. Mina uh, was from Nepal, from a very poor family, and her husband left her and abandoned her, and she was left with her daughter. So she had to move in with her mother and dad, who were also very poor. And so Mina then was responsible to take care of her family. Well, she couldn't find work in Nepal, and so she went to a travel agency that said, we can provide you a great job overseas. So Mina went with this travel agency, wound up in Lebanon, and it wasn't for a job. Mm. She was trafficked. She was sent to Lebanon as a slave. She, men were coming in every day, exploiting her. She was a domestic slave, and she was there for two years, and one day she said, I'm going to kill myself. And so she hung a scarf up on the ceiling fan mm. to hang herself. But then she remembered her daughter. Ah. And she said, I can't in my life. So what she did is she took six scarves, tied them together, made a rope, and climbed out of the building, wow. six-story building, wow. and escaped. And a man began to help her, and he helped her get back to Nepal, where she then was helped by Love Justice International, oh. who took oh. her in and said, we want to help you. And they counseled her, counseled her, they gave her all kinds of help, and she actually then joined the staff of Love Justice and became a transit monitor to help intercept people as they were being trafficked, but before they reached their point of exploitation. So Mina actually came on staff with our organization. Wow. Um, it has a little bit of a sad ending. Um, Mina then got married and got pregnant, but she, during child labor, passed away oh. with her baby. Oh. And so the importance of this picture mm -hmm. is actually to remember Mina mm -hmm. and a life that is significant, yeah. a life that has changed, and a, and a legacy that lives on. That's so that's right. this portrait. And not just one life. That's right. This is, this is the life yeah. of her daughter yeah. and future generations right. that could have had been affected by this. Absolutely. So very yes. important because it is sad, but. There's other stories that some yes. people haven't yes. gotten out. And right. so, Absolutely. so yes, yes, thank you yes. for sharing this mm -hmm. one. So show us yeah. now another Okay, one. great. <laughs> okay, Bob, now your turn to share this um, piece of art here, please. Okay, this painting is done by a artist that has been prolific in Vail for huh? decades, uh, Don Solly. Okay. And this represents the slave trade in Ghana where they uh, are on Lake Volta, which is the largest man-made lake in the world, and they started putting little boys and stuff to work as fishing slaves, and they dive down, they get caught in the nets and all that kind of stuff, and drown, and so we put together a partnership with the NFL Foundation, and a couple churches, and some individual NFL players, and we built three, we funded three stations that intersect these boys on route. And okay. so Don has a number of paintings that are in the exhibit that these are fish and this is Lake Volta and you can see his style. He's a uh, phenomenal artist. Uh, and again, so different because you just shared a story about boys. You know, some people think with the young ones of slavery, just with the right. sex slave right. with the girls, mm -hmm. there are boys also mm -hmm. though. So thank you for sharing the story. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, now people can really see the depths of the different styles of these paintings and the artists. And this one to me was really interesting. So share the story behind this okay, one. Okay, this please. is a, an artist, Lise Ansley from Atlanta, and she's a contemporary artist. And she wanted to capture, uh, and she called the painting bartering. And so this is like an aerial view of a person that's trafficking another person. And so that's what's going on here. Got it. And uh, 
She yeah. really wrestled with this for months, but I love the painting. I do too. It's I love the painting. colors. This really the did colors. capture yes. my attention. Colors. One of the yeah. So great example yeah. of the, the, again, the different styles and what you're displaying because you have commissioned, right, with these yeah. paintings and they're not for sale. I want to make sure that right. people understand mm -hmm. these paintings are not for sale. They're really for awareness mm -hmm. and to be put on display and to learn more about everything that um, the cause of what yes. you're um, supporting. So thank right. you so much. Yeah, thank yeah, you. I appreciate thank you it. so much. Okay, another totally different style here. And Bob, share about this painting. Okay, well, this is Claire. Claire was trafficked, and she thought she had a job and was uh, heading an airport and got to Iran, a stopover, and they opened up her suitcase and it okay. had heroin in it. Aww. And she didn't know they had put heroin in there. So they arrested her and they told her the amount of heroin you will be executed. So she was put in prison and they used to call off the names of the people that were going to be executed as she waited. And she was a praying woman and somehow she got out. And she uh, got back and Love Justice hired her and she worked for Love Justice. So I was looking for something that was kind of like iconic Catholic look uh -huh. where you have make a saint for her courage and that kind of stuff. So uh, artist Joanna Spinks from New, uh, Malibu she put the gold kind of leaf halo yes. that they compare yes. on saints, and we just said she's a saint. I love that. Well, you've got a creative side to you, too. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> I'm thinking, yes. So another, definitely. I definitely, yes. I think I agree. Oh my gosh, that is a great story. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Wow, what a tour. I've actually been trailing from behind because I did not want to get in front of these beautiful pieces. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you so, so yeah. much. Mm -hmm. This is just yeah. the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And so when the bigger exhibit comes, um, either to Breckenridge or to Vail or wherever it might be in Colorado, please, please, please yeah. take the opportunity to view this exhibit, which really is important to a, a very important cause. Yeah. So Libby and Bob, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Andy, as yes. always, thank you so much for that, being that's here. so interesting. Oh my gosh, thank you, thank you thank both you for so just much. being able to share so and, and have that awareness. Yeah. And everyone be sure to share too. This yeah. is important, yeah. yes. a really important uh, thing for people to be aware of and to share with others. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a privilege. I mean, this is one of the greatest injustices in the world. And for artists to convey yeah. beauty, and dignity yeah. to people that have been so traumatized, yeah. Yeah. it really is a privilege to be involved. Yeah, well, thank, thank you. you yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.